What is going on guys? It is Steven, your semi-comprehensive guide here, and in today's video I'm going to be showing you how to connect your PlayStation 5 console and play games from anywhere using Remote Play. So PlayStation Remote Play is an application we can download on our iPhone, Android phone, PC, and Mac that allows us to connect to our PlayStation 5 and stream games from anywhere in the world that has an internet connection. So the process of using Remote Play is relatively simple, and in today's video I'll show you how to get the most out of using Remote Play and connecting to your PlayStation 5. Now I do have a disclaimer to give before before getting into this tutorial and that is that Remote Play is not a perfect application. It has issues with latency and input lag and sometimes it just doesn't want to work. But 70% of the time it does work just fine and if you keep in mind that it's not a perfect application while going into this tutorial, it can be a very useful tool to use to access your PlayStation 5 when you're not near it. So with that out of the way, let's get into the actual process of using Remote Play. So to start, let's enable a few settings on the actual PlayStation 5 console itself. So from the home screen here, just go up to settings and then go down to users and account accounts, then go down here to other, and then go to console sharing and offline play. Make sure that it is enabled. If you see this option here, disable, that means it is enabled already and you don't need to do anything, but if it says enable, select it and enable console sharing and offline play. This basically sets this PlayStation 5 console as the primary for our account, so it'll actually show up when we sign in on the remote play application. So with that enabled, let's go back to the main settings screen here, and then go down to system, then go down to remote play and make sure remote play is enabled. This one's pretty obvious we're going to need remote play enabled if we're actually going to connect via remote play. So once that's enabled, go back out of here and then go down to power saving and then go into features available in rest mode. And in here, we're going to change a few internet settings for when the console is in rest mode. So make sure that stay connected to the internet is enabled and also make sure that enable turning on PS5 from network is also enabled. So with all these settings enabled, we can put our PlayStation 5 into rest mode and we can go to our device of choice to start a remote play session. So I'll be showing you how to use remote play on your smartphone as well as on your computer. So if you want to see the computer method, skip ahead to this timestamp right here. But for now, let's get started with the smartphone method of using remote play. So it doesn't matter whether you're using an iPhone or an Android phone. The process is virtually the same once you have the app installed. Just go to the App Store or the Google Play Store. Search PS Remote Play. Make sure you get the one that's from PlayStation Mobile Inc. Once it has installed, just open it right up. And it'll ask you to sign in with your PlayStation Network account. Make sure it's the same account you were signed in as on the PlayStation 5 console when we changed all those settings just a minute ago. So once you're signed in and go through some of the data collection uh, approvals, just press OK on those. Then it'll ask you what console type you want to connect to, PS5 or PS4. Select PS5 and it'll search the network for PlayStation 5s. So on your first connection, I'd recommend having the PlayStation 5 on and having both devices connected to the same network. I'm not sure if this is a requirement. It does not specify on the Remote Play app, but for the first time connection, I'd recommend doing this. So it's going to take a moment to search the the internet for our PlayStation 5 and once it has found it it will connect to it and we'll get this screen here if your phone is in portrait mode like I have right here you'll have the controller prompts down there at the bottom with the screen at the top this is a little bit too small though for my personal preference so I'm going to flip it and now we have the controller prompts there on each side and if we want to use the L and the R sticks we just tap anywhere in that empty space there in the middle and now we have our two control sticks so using the PlayStation 5 this way is very clunky having to tap on the screen to see your button prompts and using the control sticks this way is not really fun in my experience. So the best way to game using remote play is to actually use a DualSense controller. So to connect a controller, the process is very simple. Just go to your phone's settings, then go to Bluetooth and go to wherever you can view available devices to pair with Bluetooth. So once you're there, go to your DualSense controller, press and hold the PlayStation button and the Create button for about three seconds. And once you have the light around the touch bar will start to flash. This means it is ready to pair with a device so go back to your phone settings and it should appear as a wireless controller in your Bluetooth pairing menu here so just tap on that and it'll connect to your phone go back to the remote play app most likely it was disconnected if you went to your settings menu so just reconnect and now you can see that we can navigate around using our controller now there is a lot of latency here I'd say at its worst it can be close to a half a second of latency which is pretty bad especially if you want to game online which is why I gave a disclaimer at the beginning if you want to try to use this in an online match, you would get absolutely destroyed because of the latency. But if you're doing a single player game that doesn't really require precise inputs, uh, it's just fine. The quality on this isn't too bad. It maxes out at 720p, which isn't great, but on a smaller phone screen, it's really not that noticeable. If you were using this on an iPad or a larger tablet, you most likely would start to notice the lower quality, but on a smartphone, it's not too bad. Now keep in mind that if you're out and about and you want to stream remote play over cellular data, that is unfortunate 
unfortunately not possible right now. It'll just give you an error message if you try to connect. You can, if you wanted to, set up a Wi-Fi hotspot with a different phone and connect to that phone as if it were a Wi-Fi connection, then you can stream it just fine. But if you try to connect directly to a cell tower and stream remote play, that is unfortunately not possible at this point. Now, if you want to disconnect from your PlayStation 5 and put it back into rest mode, easiest way to do that is to go down here to the settings icon and then select disconnect and then make sure to check the box put the console into rest mode and then press OK and it'll disconnect and put the console into its sleep mode. If you want to disconnect the controller, easiest way to do that is to go to your phone's Bluetooth settings and disconnect it through here. Now, if you would like to reconnect your controller back to the PlayStation 5, the only way to do that is with a USB-C cable. So just plug one end of the cable into your controller, other end into the console, and then press the PlayStation button to turn it on. And once it is connected and you're signed in, you can just unplug the cable and it is reconnected to your console. So that does it for the mobile application, now let's move on to the computer method for using Remote Play. So to use a Remote Play on your Windows PC or Mac, we first have to download the application, so go to the Remote Play website. I'll leave a link down below to the install screen here. So just agree to the privacy policy and click download. Follow all of the usual steps for installing an application. Once it is installed, the process is virtually the same to the phone method, so open up the application, sign in to the same PlayStation Network account you used, change all the settings on the console. Once you're signed in, it'll ask you what type of console you want to use so obviously we're going to connect to the PlayStation 5 and it'll scour the internet looking for our PlayStation 5 and once it's found it it'll turn it on if it is not on already and we will be connected to our PlayStation 5. Now unlike the phone there are no uh, on-screen controller prompts. The way to control and navigate through the home screen is using the arrow keys. Now if you want to use the other buttons on the controller that is unfortunately not possible with keyboard shortcuts but obviously the best way to use PlayStation Remote Play is with a DualSense controller. Now, unlike the smartphone method, we cannot connect our controller wirelessly to our PC or Mac. We have to connect it via a USB-C cable. So just plug it in and Remote Play will automatically recognize it. And now the controller will work just fine navigating here through the PlayStation uh, home screen. Same thing as on smartphone. The input lag is pretty bad. I would definitely not recommend going in any online matches. It's good for navigating around menus and maybe uh, trying to use a single player game it would be just fine, but uh, anything online I would not recommend unless you want to get absolutely destroyed. The resolution also isn't as good, and unlike on smartphones, you do actually notice the lower quality. It's still 720p, but because it is a larger screen, you will notice a few more of those pixels. Everything looks a little bit fuzzy on the screen. So if you step back and squint at it, or you have a really low quality monitor, it's fine, but if you have a larger monitor like I do, then it is very noticeable. Now, once you are done using your PlayStation 5 and you want to put it back into rest mode, just press the X to close out of the window and it'll ask you if you want to put the PlayStation 5 into rest mode just check the box there and then press OK and it will close the application and put the PS5 back into its resting state other than that that's how you use remote play if you have any questions about remote play how it's used issues about remote play that you might have encountered whether it be on Android uh, iOS Windows or Mac leave those down below I'll try to help you out as soon as possible uh, if you have a suggestion for a future tutorial leave Leave that down below as well. Other than that, I've been Steven, your semi-comprehensive guide, and be sure to have a wonderful rest of your day.